anything you find shameful or embarrassing. Hurtful. So do yourself and your prudish American views on sex a favor and try church stuff today. Hey guys, my name's Dan and today's reaction comes from Dead Meat. This is Deathgasm 2015 Kill Count. Now, I'm really excited to get into this because I really enjoy this movie, but I'm also kind of torn because I really enjoy what Zorin has done with the series. I enjoy his sense of humor, the fake as he's introduced, but I'm also really excited because this also means that we're going to get James back because we haven't seen him do a new uh, Kill Count in a very, very long time. But uh, if you enjoy other Dead Me videos, I've reacted to many of them for you to enjoy. And if you want to see future reactions that I do, you can go right below this video, click that like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell, because not only does it give you access to future reactions that I do, but it also helps my channel out a ton. Then you can go on over and support Dead Me. And if you haven't already, I'll leave a link to the channel down in the description. And without any further ado, let's go. Welcome to the Kill Count, where we oh, tell you the victims oh, in all our it. favorite horror movies. I love I'm it. Zorin, and this I'm Zorin, this is Voyage, and today you better get ready, because <laughs> evil is coming with Deathgasm, released yeah. in 2015. Deathgasm is the story of two metalheads, and <clears throat> I'm gonna change my voice here, who start a band and unwittingly unleash a demon upon a small New Zealand town. They fight their way through the demonic forces using chainsaws, dice, and, you know, other things that we can't show thanks yeah. to YouTube's no, delicate no, 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 no. Deathgasm is the first feature film written and directed by New Zealander Jason Lee Howden. His usual job is as a visual effects artist on films including The Hobbit Trilogy and Shang-Chi. Oh, you may wow. also know him from his 2019 film Guns Akimbo, or his 2020 Twitter controversy that involved online bullying, another person using a racial slur, and honestly, it's all kinds of messy. You oh. can look it up for yourself if you want. Oh, Listen, dear. I don't condone his behavior, and I saw this movie years before any of this ever happened, and I only learned of it from doing research for this. But I still think this is a great movie, and yes. if you're willing, come with me for this ride. Come yes. On. How did secured financing for Deathgasm after entering several ideas into the 2013 Make My Horror Movie competition in New Zealand? Deathgasm is the most ambitious one, and I was like, fuck, I just, I hope this isn't the one. But it turns out that's the one that secured him 200,000 New Zealand bucks. And with some other financing, he used that to film a script he wrote in nine days. Nine drunken Damn. days. <laughs> he based a lot of the story on his own experiences growing up. As I also noticed what shirt he, that, that's a, that was a Sepultura shirt. Yep, yep, straight up. That is a Sepultura shirt. Oh, man, I'm going to recognize a lot of these. Drunken days. <laughs> I mean, I already did from the movie, but we'll get into that. It's a lot of the story on his own experiences growing up as a metalhead in a small New Zealand town. Production only lasted 20 days. That's shorter than Tremors 3, y'all. And that oh. means a lot of the shots in this film were done in one take. You nail it in this take, and then, like, other... Otherwise, if you stammer or something, then we don't have it. Deathgasm is inspired by the early splatstick films of Peter Jackson and Sam Raimi, as well as 80s films like The Goonies and Monster Squad. I can see that. I just love watching a group of losers just kind of kick ass. He's also clearly a very big fan of Edgar Wright style editing, which in itself is really Sam Raimi style editing, so, you know, it's just a gloriously bloody Ouroboros. Yeah. By this point, Howden was sick of the world of computer effects he'd been stuck in. Rotoscoping around, like, hobbit toes. So he decided to do as many practical effects as he could, and rightfully so. The results are as twisted as this bitch in metal soundtrack, mm -hmm. with the movie getting gorier and gorier as it goes on. And that's why I'm happy to have a sponsor today. No sponsor. And that's why I'm happy to blur out all the gore in this video today. Yes. Will this rock and roll nightmare be a bouquet of blood roses, or will it turn out to be a monster dog of a film? Let's find out and get to the kills. The movie begins with a photo booth filtered teaser trailer for the movie you're about to watch. Not weird enough for you? How about intestine credits, penis Oof. guitars, and Oof. a royalty-free He-Man that screams like a real monster? <laughs> yeah, you know that deserves a title card. <laughs> We're in Grey Point, New Zealand, <laughs> learning about Brody through his butterfly effect notebook. After his mom had a very methy Christmas, he was sent to live with his Uncle Albert, a man who's keen on Jesus, which conflicts with Brody's tastes. Like many a bored suburban kid, Brody starts a band with his bros. On keyboards is Dion, this toe-headed Kiwi Harry Potter who gets bullied by Brody's cousin David. Oh. And on drums is this Auckland Angus named Giles, played by Daniel Cresswell, who I remember from the most epic safety video ever made. Oh. And then on bass, there's Zach, a guy Brody 
Brody met at the local record store. He's the perfect bro to get high with, or, you know, make a blood pack yeah, with, or yeah, no. make fucking napalm? Hmm, do I smell sodium tetrasulfate bonding with chlorophyll? Mm -hmm. That looks like it's time for another Woodland Critter Christmas. Hail Satan! Brody hopes ha! their music can match the Frank Frazetta fantasy he has featuring music by Elm Street. It's just one of the many incredible bands on this soundtrack that works so well even if you're not a metal fan. The live aid of metal. Yeah. <laughs> if Brody's it's gonna... also really cool to like see like these like hardcore scenes to where they're chopping through like uh, demons or whatever and you got heavy metal playing in the background. I've always wanted that to happen and we finally got it. To be shredding off Brazier's like in his It made the most sense. Dreams though? Their band's going to need a cool name. Murderbana Toothed Vagina. Oh, maggot spin. Most of these names were improvised and made the cast and crew crack up, with <laughs> some of them. So darkly offensive that we can't, we had to burn yeah, some them. We had to like delete them off the camera afterwards. How about wow. we just go with the name of the movie? Death Guess. All spelt in capitals. Lower cases for pussies. And this misspelling was due to a very tired Howden doing this effect himself at 5 a.m. on deadline for the movie's South by Southwest premiere. But hey, spelling okay. things correctly is for pussies. <laughs> And there's Damn. also a death clock, so I, I I didn't really mind it that much. I thought it was an homage to that, to be honest. Practice commences until we heavy metal up your butthole transition to the home of Ricky Daggers. No relation to Robin. He wouldn't be caught dead going to the mall today. Unless there were cool robots there. Or Dick Miller. Ricky <laughs> Daggers is the Robin lead Sparkles. singer of Hacks and Sword, the most metal band on the planet. Aside from the Rock of Fire explosion, that is. They were literally metal. Zack has brought Brody here to break into the house. Like you do. And we find Daggers is snuggled up with his favorite album. Oh, is it the best of Alan Sherman? Probably not. No. Zach nabs it like it was a cha cha poyan fertility idol, awakening the aging rocker who kind of looks like a little bit sort of Iggy Pop, a little bit Dee Schneider from uh, Twisted Sister. Yeah, He's played that. by Steven Yuri, who you may have seen as a bunch of orcs in Lord of the Rings, huh? and most recently as Howard the Cuck in X. Ricky attacks the boys who tell him how they found him. Latest death stream, dude. You were outed. And that newsletter's got a wide subscriber base, including this Agent 47 with hair named Vaden. And something tells me we can't trust what he's doing in the shadows. Daggers tells the boys to take his record and keep it secret. Keep it safe. They then run off while Vaden swings by to get our kill count started with a gruesome throat mm -hmm. slit. Damn, that would even make Sweeney Todd uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. Good work. My friend, my faithful friend. <laughs> The Beast Love Wars it. boys return to enjoy their new licorice pizza in front of Chekhov's chainsaw. But unfortunately, it's not the flavor they wanted. It's a fucking Rick Astley record. Ooh, Ooh. Rick Roll. Classic yeah, Rick internet. Mm -hmm. Brody is never going to give it up and find some old papers while Ernest becomes Electro Man in the next room. Oh, looks like sheet music, but uh, what's the song called? I don't know, I think it's Latin. Okay, I'm drawing a line in the fucking sand here. Do not read the Latin. They don't, for now. Vaden returns to his boss, Aeon, who has been looking for the song he calls The Black Hymn. Aeon is played by Andrew Lang, who had gone head-to-head -head with Brody's actor, Milo Cawthorn, when they were both in Power Rangers oh RPM. And since, and since Aeon's latest attack bot has failed him, Vaden's fate is sealed. Take his fucking head off. His lackeys from the Foundation comply, chopping Vaden's head off and spreading blood all over Aeon's custom-made Satori rug. Ooh, probably should have put a tarp down, but at- Do it again. Do it Wait, again. you want me to count the yeah. kill again? Yes. Again! Uh, again! Okay, sure. Uh, cool. I guess I'll just put this here and this over here and- I legit laughed at this part. It's so ridiculous. It's good. Yeah, I think they worked. Works for me. I just used the same graphic again. Uh -huh. Deathgasm is recording their first music video, Intestinal Bungee Jump. And these misfits are rocking some kiss-like corpse paint, with Giles looking like my kitty Phantom in this park. They rock out until Dion makes a cock out of one of the swords. Then pack it up and head back to Detroit Rock City. There, Brody bumps into funky Bold Medina, this movie's love interest, who is written very much like a love interest. She's currently dating Brody's bullying cousin David. We saw her earlier at the high school where she was voted most likely to walk in slow motion, as well as another superlative. Number one cause of awkward boners in Grey Point. However shallow some might think this character is, actress Kimberly Crossman was excited to play her as a badass, having some experience as the Red Ranger in Power Rangers what? Samurai. At the time of filming, she was living in the Whoa. States and actually paid for her own flights back and forth to save the production money. Good on you, Kim. Yeah. Can I call you Kim? Agreed. Medina invites Brody out for an iced cream that they enjoy at Landfill Park. We get some cute banter between Brody and Medina about his drawing skills and where she should get a future tattoo. You know, I was thinking about getting it just, um... Oh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, uh-huh. 
Yes. Yep. Good spot for it. I mean, I think this scene is actually very sweet. And it's an example- I'd actually have the same reaction if I was him. How the director wanted to break- Try to be respectful, but also be like, yeah, that's, mm -hmm, that, that, that's fine. The yeah, stereotypes that's of metalheads being bullies and douchebags. In yes. fact, his thoughts on metal are beautifully expressed by Bro. Yes. It's like when life sucks and, and you feel alone and empty. Yes. Stick on some metal and life is better because because mm -hmm. somebody else knows the pain and, and the rage that you Hundred percent. Yeah. Very convincing. And I think it's time Medina tried, 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 tried some heavy metal. Just don't tell your boyfriend not, David who's watching all not, of this. Not cat on decapitation, which is what that last one was. It's from an insert shot. Medina takes a walk in the 90s, judging by the disc man there. And when she pops in the razor wire CD she borrowed from Brody, this princess of power is transported like Eddie Riggs to the temple of Ormagodin. Our Medina Menzel belts out notes while dressed like a Brunhilde bunny. And this whole fantasy ends with some lumber Jack Robert Robotics. Whoa. Couldn't have Keanu Reeves did better myself. Mm -hmm. At band practice, they play the black hymn for the first time, which causes Uncle Albert to realize who Kaiser Soze really is. The song is powerful and enchanting, but Brody gets too nervous to keep playing it for now. Ah, uh, when are we gonna get to the Deathgasm Factory? Later at Crowley High, our Todd translates this song of pure evil's Latin title. Despite what I fucking said earlier. Oh yeah, this thing's called the Black Hymn and it's designed to gain power and fortune and, you know, summon the King of Demons. Might come in handy when you get beat up by your dickhead cousin on account yeah. of that music swapping courtship he yeah. saw. You know what, I changed my mind. Idre, Ethe, Uckingfe, Attenle. Since Brody's getting beat, Medina can only find Zack as he's stealing Diesel from a freaking ambulance in true loco fashion. Uh. She gives Zack a note to give to Brody. Don't read it. He of course does, and instead of passing it along, he meets up with Medina at the park, one bench over from Stanley Ipkiss. What there he lies to the love interest. Told me to pass on a message. He's not interested. And Medina believes him for some reason. And now she's making out with Zack because, you know, the plot wants her to. Sure, at why not? practice, they start to play the black hymn again, and this time, Brody is determined to finish. That's right, if you're gonna get anyone to Deathgasm, you need to commit. The demons turn it up to 11 and open the garage, causing a very bloody barf o uh -huh. Uncles barf on tables, kids barf on soccer ball, uh. Mayor Grundy barfs on his wife's tits, babies barf into the air, it's barf-tastic! <laughs> the band then passes out and awakens much later with a wicked hangover, but seemingly no extra power. Guys, do I look different? No nope. powerful. Nope. Oh! <laughs> Zach's a bad character, but I think he just doesn't quite understand how to socialize. In fact, I don't think he cares. The next day at school, the hymn's effects are felt by a no longer housebound teacher, Mr. Capenhurst. Or maybe he just had Chipotle for lunch. Oh! But not even Chipotle away is gonna clean out those bloodstains. <laughs> oh no! Evil Dead camera zoom reveals him as a demon, and the Raimi S levels of splatter continue as he so pukes good. on one of his students. <laughs> oh, okay, that's a lot of. Yeah, it's nope, a second no, take. more. Yeah. Okay, well, you know, that's right. Just get Last it all second out. Take, but second. Feel better. That night, while Brody wonders why Medina ignored him, Zack's dad reveals that he wants to be a headbanger like his son. That, sure or does. win a cosplay award as the Pale Man. I got the eyes. With a deadite glide, he kicks off a not-so-quiet riot and attacks his son. Please kill him. I hate him so much. It's like flames on the side of my face. But Brody comes to the rescue by sanding down Pops to a nub that originally involved a more cartoonish skull effect that the director decided against. So instead, Zack just drops an engine right onto his head. Should we his pulse? Nah, just look at the graphic. And let me tell you, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna want right a there. closed yeah. gasket funeral for this one. Brody realizes these demon possessions must have come from them playing the Black Hymn. So to find answers, they head to the record store. And along the way, witness these Grey Point ghoulies eating a couple of kiwis. Gotta get that daily dose of vitamin C. The C stands sure. for coronary. They arrive at the record store under a blood moon. Whoop, look out, boys of Winchester. Dion and Giles are looking for Zack and Brody, but instead find this Jack looking grody. Giles has good taste in t-shirts, but bad taste in weapons, as he shoots Agreed. off some D20s at guys. this guy. Ooh, sorry, they crit fail. So it's a good thing their barbarian shows up to teach us why you never split your party. I would just come up with like a one-liner, like you were axing for this or something. That would be really cool, right? Yeah, but you'd have to be some kind of expert to do that. <laughs> <laughs> 
And actress Kimberly Crossman was a huge Buffy fan and absolutely loved getting covered in so much blood. Got blood in my bra now, actually. Dion says oh. the school is the safest place to be, based on a suggestion from his dad, who's a warden. I mean, was <laughs> until he got possessed and ate my skin off. But according to James Armageddon, Janice, unmet characters don't get counted in kills. It was hours ago. Get the fuck over it. They leave a note and continue the hunt for their wilder people right into a Purge movie wide shot. Brody and Zack find Abigail, the psychic co-owner of the record store, who tells them what to expect from playing the black hymn. The possessed bodies kill all in their path in preparation for Aloth's ascension. Aloth being the king of demons, who will arise at the witching hour of 3 a.m. 3 a.m. Pacific or Eastern time? Do demons recognize daylight savings? <laughs> what is this I love that line. Quit poking holes in... Abigail! Oh, yep. Her friend and store co-owner Byron trades in Chicago-style hot dogs for an even heartier meal. But hey, there's no time to mourn since somehow Abigail is back. Yeah, maybe Zach was right to question these demon rules. Across town, Aeon and his cult members meet up with a possessed kid named Terry. He's one of Cousin David's friends. We saw him earlier bullying Dion and beating up Brody. And now Terry Bones asks Aeon to destroy the pages of the Black Hymn so they can't be used to reverse Aeloth's ascension. He'd do it himself, but you know, you need a soul to touch the pages. And does this Lolita fan look like he has a soul? Aeon agrees to Terry Badjaw's request with one condition. He gets to be Aeloth's vessel upon his return. His soul will bind with the blackest human soul nearby. We'll make a good vessel though when you're stabbed in the back and throat Ooh. by this chick named Shayna. Shayna had worked for Aeon and was seen earlier in a blowjob gag. No, he doesn't have a gag reflex. Actually, that's a pretty good joke. You looking yes, for a is. job at Dead Meat? I pledge allegiance to Aloth the Blind. Oh, okay, so you're, you're busy. I'll yeah. just keep your CV on file. We catch up on a very metal episode of Supernatural with Zam and Brodeen Winchester, who somehow escaped the record <laughs> shop unscathed. Brody thinks oh, playing the black man. hymn backwards can reverse the effects, an idea he got from a Judas Priest album in reference to the band's subliminal message trial. You see, in 1990, the band was subject to a three-week trial with a lawsuit blaming them for the suicides of two teens based on supposedly hidden subliminal messages in their Stained Class album. Zach doesn't care about all that, and he'd rather drive his car like a carter and watch the world burn. Luckily, Brody's secret stash of courage has him take the wheel and convince Zach to help. They get to Brody's uncle's house, where Zach proves once again he can't be trusted with notes. Oh, and speaking of notes, better grab that black hymn. I'll get the music. Whoops! Uncle Albert attacks his nephew, while Zach grabs a cerveza chango. <laughs> and so he Zach McCrackens it over Albie's head, and after Aunt Mary says, not in my father's den, they're chased into the bedroom. They look for weapons, but only find church stuff. Uh, what kind of church stuff is that? Oh. Uh, I think they're, um, oh. rosary beads. No. Yeah, pretty sure those are anal beads. So yep. say, ten hail assies and two are farters, and all should be forgiven. Fucking sinner. They arm up with the booty beads and a screen used prop from Requiem for a Dream and attack Brody's aunt and uncle. Oh, but dear. a couple of mollywax and some vibrator tosses ain't gonna do the trick. So Brody heads to the garage for some Leatherface outtakes. When you had like so many other different weapons back there. Working as Zack is dragged into the bedroom to fight off Uncle Albert with the only weapon he can find. A BMS naked addiction dildo. Or actually sure. maybe it's a real cock too. Honestly, I just can't see it because of the sensor. In any case, Zack uses this Charlie Cox on the blind uncle <laughs> and completely tears off Albie's jaw, killing him in what was labeled cock gag number seven. <laughs> yeah, put a hole in the back of that for the cock to me. Yeah, yeah, great, okay, cool. Ah, uh, horror movie effects departments always seem like so much fun, but especially so here since director Howden brought on his friend and former band member Tim Wells. Finally collaborating with like one of my best friends. Zach then bead whips Aunt Mary's stunt double across the room, after which Brody sends the chainsaw straight through her belly. She there then leaps go. on top of her nephew with a fun mouth cam shot. And since it's now time to get her off, ew, that's his aunt. Yeah, he grabs some vibrators dude. and sticks them in her ears with a not so great digital effect. Just give that yeah, rabbit I, back to that Charlotte when you're done, great. okay? No. Right when you think it's over, Cousin David gets home. Oh wait, doesn't look like he's... No, no, alive anymore. F that guy. Since Brody chainsaws through his head, giving him some bizarre cartoon cross eyes. Uh, Brody, pretty sure he wasn't possessed. Oh no, of course he was. No, yeah, no, not totally. He came in, he said uh, something about Satan. Yeah, I got... You didn't hear him say that? Nope, yeah. you, uh, you definitely just did a murder. Don't let your kids know you have a sex life. 
Church oh. stuff can save you embarrassment. Church stuff is a sign you can put on anything <laughs> you find shameful or embarrassing. <laughs> Hurtful. <laughs> so do yourself and your prudish American views on sex a favor and try church stuff today. Brody goes for the black hymn pages, but to pad oh, the movie's man. runtime, they're magically blown out the window. As if they were Triforce map pieces in Wind Waker. God, that endgame was so annoying. 400 rupees to decipher each one. Fuck you, Chingo. God. Whew. Yeah. I'm fine. Luckily, okay. they take the HD remake you. approach and keep things short. A montage gets the pages back and also adds two more demons to the kill count. The first with a saw blade to the face, and the second in a kill that's not safe for work, or oh, YouTube, no. or honestly no. anywhere. anywhere. When they no. use a whipper snipper. You guys what? call them uh, weed whacker. We call them whipper snippers. <laughs> what the fuck? You know what? Whatever you <laughs> yeah, call them, it results in a mangled wangle. You're pretty good at whacking guys off, bro. <laughs> in case you were wondering, that was a very practical uncircumcised penis. So no Jewish demons, huh? <laughs> I wonder if they made that prop with New Zealand style Dixieland. They grab the last page and find Medina and the dungeon dweebs hiding in the school. And when Brody spots Zack's jacket in Medina's bag, she admits that she was written to make out with Zack. You know, after she thought Brody ignored her note. But hey, I'm sure Zack has a very good explanation. I'm not even into it, I was just bored. You know what? I'm gonna say what AC Slater should have said years ago. Fuck you, Zack. Also, True. whatever happened to my sister JB? The boys have a bit of a row that leaves yeah, the bros right? until Zack finally leaves uh. for meaner pastures. Time to finish this crazy, crazy night and play the black hymn backwards. But if they want the whole town to hear them, they're gonna need some serious amps. And with Doc Brown unavailable, they head back to Ricky Dagger's place only to find Shayna the She-Devil, who tears up the black hymn and ties our Scoobies up so they can finish a lost summoning ritual. Sam Raimi-style snap zooms reveal someone's in that trunk, and it ain't Pinhead John. Ritter. It's Ricky Slitty Tavi, and he's got a question for them. Which one? Which one for me? Uh, yes, I volunteer not Alan Tudyk here. Before Dion can lose his skullginity, a deus ex Zachina comes in to beat <laughs> demon Ricky to death with a hammer. Oh, Ricky, you're not fine. You're not fine. You've got no mind. Dead Ricky! Zach doesn't yeah, apologize yeah. for his past actions, but hey! Middlehead stick together, right? Uh, sure, I guess. Wait. You decided that you wanted to help us, and then you went and applied makeup? Hey, it's not makeup! It's corpse paint for going into battle! Well, you look adorable. Oh, thank you. With the pages destroyed, Brody's gonna have to play the song for memory. And while he does, Zack gets this battle royale going with Gunner's Punch Saws. He double fists his way up the bum of one cultist, ooh, ooh, ooh. turning him into a chainsaw lollipop. Zack then breaks another cultist's arm, and some off-screen screams lead me to believe that this cultist gets culled as well. And actually, a lot of these kills were improvised based on what prosthetics they had lying around their shop that were donated to them by Practical Effects House Main Reaction known for their work on Ash vs. Evil Dead. Nice. The rest of the group storms the stage, while Zack is sucked out the window like David at the Winchester. The demons enter from the night like Sandmen. Y'all better get ready for a fight! But wait, where, where's Dion? You kidding me? He's somehow lost in this very tiny house. Well, you know, it sucks for him since a demon shows up, grabs his head, then yanks his spine out oh. like a predator trophy. Oh. I told you, never split the party! Giles isn't content being a watcher anymore, and he fires more dice at a returning demonic Byron and Abigail. But they teach this boy a lesson by giving him just a flesh wound and then beating him <laughs> to death with his own arm. Byron I love heads that towards reference. Brody, but the metalhead uses a Money slumber Python. party massacre reference to drill a hole into Byron's chest, leaving him screwed on the floor. Outside, Zack is still alive and kicking. Kicking a demon to death, that is. And five more demons want to join his Rockettes audition. But since the part's already been cast, he Naruto runs over to them and does a spinning chainsaw dance that decapitates the so whole group. Good, that they dude. didn't saw that coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my grammar is terrible. Back inside, Medina takes out Abigail and four more demons with her axe. Actual axe, you know, not like a guitar. Oh, yeah. and look, one of them is a fucking a flannel. More demons show up looking for Angela, but instead find Brody's drill, which he uses on a V-neck demon's head. Zack returns just in time to kill a cultist and two other zombies with his chainsaws, leaving this bitch, Scary Terry, as the only remaining demon. Zack cuts off his arm's head and torso in turn, leaving him with nothing but his legs to stand on. With the chainsaws out of gas and only a cowering Shayna left, it's time to play the Black... 3 a.m. 
Ah, shit, they failed. Yep. So it's time for a sky beam and Shayna's high beams to welcome Aloth back. Seriously impressive dress removal there. Nice. Yeah. Shayna gives Aloth her consent to enter her body. But before he can climb her like he was Edmund Hillary, she's stabbed through her pineapple lumps by Zack. As Terry bye bye. mentioned earlier, Aloth will enter the most evil person in the room, which is now, and let's be honest, always has been, Zack. Agreed. Aloth, the blind one, king of the demons, has returned. That is after many, many hours in the makeup chair. No longer friends forever, Zack attacks Brody, bamfing around <laughs> like an electric nightcrawler, until the fight ends with Brody stabbed like a drunken tourist in Pamplona. Zack Aloth goes for Medina next, but Brody musters up enough strength to start playing again. That's not good. Him, fucking idiot. Zach's right. Brody's gonna need a bigger note. So he plays some metal straight from his heart. And it somehow works, bringing Zach back to human form. If you can consider Zach a human. But with Aloth trying there. to regain control, there's only one option left. Finish me. Spoken like a true Steve Ritchie. So Brody takes his blood brother razor and gives Zach the Snyder Cut, Ooh. preventing Aloth, the blind demon king, from returning to Earth. He says goodbye to his quote-unquote friend with a final <laughs> metal salute. A quick trip to a Mandy-style credit sequence lets us know it's two months later. Goddamn right you subtitle that unreadable font. Brody and Medina are officially together, and she got that tattoo he designed for her. Or, you know, drew on with a sharpie. Whatever. She heads up and Brody puts on his pants like a loser, just as Ernest gets electrocuted again. Brody's hi-fi prepares to summon Kelly LeBrock, but before that we hear a very familiar laugh. <laughs> The credits roll and we get a quick post credit scene where Zack tells Brody to start a new band. And that gives us some more band riff names that weren't good enough for the earlier scene. Intesticide? But like, bestiality bliss. Yeah, how about birth canal boat riders? How about we end this kill count and get to the numbers? Right Three. after I listen to the new Dead Meat record that dropped. Oh. <laughs> Oh, they actually redid the bit! Hey, how come I'm not the one playing the guitar? <laughs> Giving the people what they want! <laughs> that was wonderful. Stupid sexy James. Oh, that was wonderful. Well, there were 37 deaths in Deathgasm. 11 living men, 3 living women, and 23 demons of various gender, giving us a mostly evil pie chart. Forged in a convection oven of pain, fueled by the souls of unbaptized babies, and baked for, you know, like 12 or 15 minutes. With a svelte runtime of 86 minutes, that gave us a true deathgasm every 2.32 minutes. Can I please get out of this makeup now? <laughs> give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to the recapitation. This is by far my favorite scene Agreed. in this movie, and his head and shoulders above the other still amazing kills. Do it again. Oh, okay. Uh, how about this? Giving this one the golden chainsaw is a no-brainer, huh? Do it again. Fine. The kill is cool and funny. You happy now? Yeah, I think they worked. Dull machete for lamest kill will go to the townsfolk eaten by demons. Those kills weren't very filling and left me hungry for more. Oh. <laughs> and that's it. Deathgasm came out in 2015, and while a sequel was entertained for a while, it seems like it's no longer gonna happen. Yes, you know what is coming, though? This guy! Hey! Oh, I'm coming back to host the kill count in just two weeks. And I'll be on the brand new kill count set, which I'll introduce to you in a separate video. But you know what that means, dude? Uh, Tear all this shit down. Get rid of it. Probably toss it. Oh. Throw this away while you're at it. Oh, thanks. All right. Well, until we meet again, uh, all right. I'm a man who was almost in the movie High Fidelity, and this has oh, been really? the kill count. Oh, it smells like James. On the next <laughs> kill count. The James first half of Stranger Things season four has already dropped, but this entire show revels in the past. So why not get nostalgic with a kill count on season three? What? Ooh. Mom, get off the phone! How many times? Want even more nostalgia? Yeah. Well, you're in luck. Yes! Because <laughs> it's time for me to kill count again. Hell yeah. yeah. It's, it's me, James A. Janice. I know you. A little. You know what? Whatever. This week, if you haven't already, rewatch Stranger Things 3 on Netflix. What's happening? I have no idea. Then on Friday, June 17th, a day free of girls. No, Willie boy. It's the day I return to host our channel's Hell flagship yeah. series, The Kill Count. He's back! He's back! All in one go. No more half seats this time. Hell yeah. Only on dead meat. Sweeter. Bolder. Better. Stranger Things Season 3. Agreed, man. That was... 
this whole thing was, was just so much fun. Again, I've really appreciated Zoran's humor. I absolutely love the references, especially all the Saved by the Bell ones. The Monty Python one was uh, pretty great because I absolutely uh, loved all of Monty Python stuff. Um, and just this whole entire movie was fantastic because, as I stated, I've always thought of like uh, action scenes or fight scenes or anything like that kind of sound a little more well, better to me with some metal playing behind it. And what better way to have metal playing behind it with it being like the central theme of the movie, which made me love it even more. Uh, like a little, but the little nitpicky stuff. Uh, the one thing when uh, when he went to go live with uh, his cousin, his aunt, and his uncle, uh, and and then there's those like shots you see like of different like posters and stuff. There's, there's a Tribune poster, which I'm you know huge fan of. But there are like there are multiple posters of the same one. There's like. There's one that has like three different shots. You can see if you if you just like pause it right, you can see one there. You can see one there. You can see one there. All like the, the, like the same posters. That that was tiny little nitpicky. I mean, it, it's a little bit, but but other than that, I I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. Of course, outside of the fact of Zach being a complete douche, and I thought it was weird that uh, the main character. Uh, forgave the girl so quick too because you know it takes two the tango there so uh, that's gonna do it for me here but before i go though i want to give a huge shout out to all of my five dollar and up supporters on patreon marvin espinoza cruising wolver 310 multi-disturbed 666 jordan bird lauren davenport caster cronich amber k raymond bright angel garcia joshua tease and chris curtis and if you too like to have your name read at then each and every one of my videos plus many other fun goodies maybe reacting to another kill count or two please head on over to patreon.com slash you did react the link will be right there and in the description you can right below this video click that join button there or right on my channel page and click that join button there and with that being said comment down below let me know what did you think about deathgasm please leave a like if you enjoyed also want to see past reaction i've done to other dead meat videos got a nice playlist right over there full for you share this video subscribe yes subscribed already for notification bell because i put new videos every single day and i'll see you guys next time <laughs>